HP, thinkers are great, but doers change the world. George Stetton spent his early years as a doctor preoccupied with a basic and common medical problem. That was sticking long needles into people where you couldn't really see where you were going. It's a simple procedure that can go tragically wrong. There was one patient who uh, died because of a stick that went in the wrong place. And he probably would have died anyway, but he died a little sooner because of what we were doing. While doctors and nurses use medical imaging like ultrasound, MRIs and CAT scans for complex operations, in routine procedures, they are often flying blind. And I uh, always sort of had in mind that there must be a way to use all these wonderful medical imaging modalities that they have uh, to be more in touch with what's inside the body. And so I came up with this idea of using a mirror and a ultrasound machine to guide a needle. In 2000, he tried a simple experiment. We got a big silvered mirror and we stuck it in a drawer right over there actually and uh, put a monitor up on a couple of books and attached an ultrasound probe. And we brought in a surgeon who said that would really be great and he was very encouraging. So Stetton refined his concept until he came up with a small portable device that virtually anyone can use. He calls it the sonic flashlight. A clinician would hold the device up against the patient's neck and the ultrasound transducer here gets the data and there's a mirror here and a little display that's inside here where you can see the reflection of the display. I can now see his carotid artery and jugular vein and I see them beneath the skin where they really actually are. The stereo vision is important to get a sense of depth and then I would just stick the needle into the vein and miss the artery, then I just aim right for it in the image. I can have my hands and the tool and the patient and the image all in the same environment. Other attempts to help doctors and nurses have centered on 3D imaging that requires headsets and complex software. The breakthrough was that if you just use a mirror and a display and mount it on the transducer, then, then it's a 2D image. You look through the mirror and you see it where it actually is and therefore a nurse and a doctor can see the same image and they don't have to both be wearing helmets. With extra software programs, the sonic flashlight can become a very sophisticated tool. You don't just see the image, you see things that are added to the image, pointers and graphical augmentations to the image. It can also be presented what we call in situ, right in the actual location. You can actually see the veins, the arteries, the nerves, they pop out at you. So it's augmenting your reality. Entrepreneur Gary Rosensteel took one look at the sonic flashlight and immediately realized its potential. It's a very elegant device. To me it means that there's a lot going on under the covers, if you will. It, it's able to do a tremendous amount of stuff, but it does it in a way that it's very easy for people to relate to and use. Plus, Stetton says, it gives doctors and nurses more of what they often lack, real-time feedback. If there's a, an infection and you need to clean the infection out or get all of the tumor, as you do the operation and you're removing the bad stuff, you can see how, exactly what bad stuff is left. It's easy to use and a cheap alternative to more cumbersome equipment. It takes ultrasound where it might not necessarily go, so it could lower costs, especially where you don't have to bring a patient into a hospital where a procedure can be done uh, in a clinic or, or in an ambulance. You don't have to be a brain surgeon to use the sonic flashlight, but Stetton says it's great for them too. A neurosurgeon is, really can't look away from the surface of the brain right before he or she cuts into it. And so ultrasound has had a little trouble getting used in neurosurgery for that reason. But if you put the image right there, then they feel more comfortable sticking a needle or a scalpel into the tissue. And he thinks the device has tremendous potential to save lives. For example, when you go for the jugular vein, you really don't want to hit the carotid artery, which supplies blood to the brain, because you could cause a clot that would go up and cause a stroke. It's often done in the middle of the night by a uh, less experienced intern uh, in an emergency situation. We're hopeful that that's going to be one of its, uh, as they say, killer apps, but we don't like to use that term in medicine. <laughs> Rosensteel is taking the sonic flashlight beyond Stetton's prototypes. He's licensing the technology through a new company called in situ View. In situ being the medical term for kind of in place, and that's what this is. You view it in place. So now that we have the exclusive rights to the technology around the world, we believe in creating um, 
medical devices that are going to help people. Uh, that's important to us, but of course we want to make money. He says the key to that is bringing the cost down from $30,000 to $10,000 and ultimately lower. Stetton predicts that his sonic flashlight will become as common a sight in hospitals as a stethoscope is now, revolutionizing the way millions of basic procedures are done. There's really not inherently that much to an ultrasound machine that can't be mass produced, so they really could be thousand dollars or less and they're going to be like cell phones and every doctor or nurse who wants to use ultrasound will just carry one around to actually walk into a hospital someday and have somebody be using it and have never even heard of me and, and there they are using this thing and that'll be cool.